Hello, I'm Justin Shaw, and I'm going to be showing you how to build the sci-fi kit for Unreal. We're going to start with this color scheme, and we're going to be using this model sheet. I'm going to be going through and modeling each of these pieces for use inside Unreal, but we have to model them in 3ds Max. So I'm going to start with this wall, 800. So I'm going to go inside 3ds Max, Alt-W to make this window large, and I'm going to click on this to set snaps on and right-click. I'm going to change the home grid and I'm going to set this number to see perspective view 800 let's see what the exact settings are we have 110 800 I thought 110 this is just going to set the grid up so that we can more accurately measure things and I'm gonna make sure I go into options enable access constraints so when we move things they stay on alignment grid points scoot this out of the way zoom out all right and so Based on this picture, no, not this one, I know that I have 800 by 800 by 20. So I'm going to build that wall. Start in the middle. And I don't care about it being perfect. I'm just going to go, I want it to be 800 by 800 by 20. And I got one of those dimensions wrong, so I'm just going to copy it 20 B that will give us a wall I'm gonna name this wall wall underscore 800 X 2 that means 800 two dimensions and I'm going to say by 20 X underscore sci-fi that's just giving it a name so I can keep track of it now I'm going to move this objects pivot I'm going to go to my hierarchy, effect pivot only, and I'm going to tell it go to vertices. Turn off grid points, press W to go to move. I'm going to move this thing to this point. Turn off vertex, turn that off, grid points. And what this will let me do is now I can adjust the pivot and put it at the center of the world. Z to zoom to full extent of the object. Zoom out. All right, now I've got this object. I'm going to unwrap it, go to modifiers, unwrap UVW, open UV editor, I'm going to hit control A, select all, mapping, unfold mapping, that's going to unwrap my box, but it's going to unwrap it in a really not a great way, so I'm going to go to edges, scroll down, point to point, turn map seams off, and I'm going to cut this object make sure I have edges and I'm just going to make three C's see I've got one C another C see it's open at the bottom and same thing on this side turn it off go to polygons control a mapping unfold mapping hit OK For a second I'm gonna grab these and I'm gonna go break I'm gonna turn them 90 degrees by holding control them here because they're just taking up too much room there break 90 degrees all right we've got room I'm gonna grab these I'm gonna move it in a little bit I'm gonna expand it to take up more room now I'm gonna give this a second set of UVs this is for light maps inside Unreal this is what re Unreal records the shadows on. It saves them as permanent. And I'm going to go to I'm gonna go map channel. One, I'm just going to set this to two. Hit move. Then I'm just going to go back to one. That gives me my map. I want to keep them away from the edges because sometimes these uh, shadow maps get really small. Now I've got this object. And to save time, I'm just going to press two on my keyboard to go to edges. Select this edge. See where it connects. stitch means I need to scoot it down some I'm just going to attach them to each other grab the edge stitch stitch oh must be upside down 
I'm gonna do is back it up. Uh oh. Hold down control to snap it to angles. Come on. There we go. Scoot it back up. There we go. And now I'm going to go tools, render UV template. I'm going to go 2048 by 2048. Just a power of two. Render, save. And I'm going to go inside my file and I'm going to save this under maps, builders, and I already have some of these maps laid out. But I'm going to create a new channel, new piece, call this just like you should. Builders. Building the entire folder hierarchy is very important. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go back one channel. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go new. And I'm going to call this sci-fi level I'm going to go inside and I'm going to create a new couple of files I'm going to create 3ds max saves right click UE4 saves assets uh oh Assets, maps, and I'm going to go inside. Come on. Go inside maps, right click, and I'm going to make two folders builders and final. Keeps them organized. I'm going to builders, and I'm going to save this as wall 800 underscore D-I-F-F -F for diffuse. The little d, I'll change that to capital once I'm done with it. And I'm going to save this as a PSD or a TIFF. I think I'm going to go for TIFF. Hit save, because TIFF allow me to have uh, layers and other things like that. Close this. I'm going to right click, convert to editable poly. I'm going to triangulate this. I'm going to go to subdivide. I'm going to press F4 to see my lines, and I'm going to change this to 90. Game engines, 900, I mean. Game engines want everything. They only see in triangles, and they render triangles really fast. So you have to triangulate all of your objects. Then I'm going to right-click, convert to editable poly. I'm going to press W on my keyboard, and I'm going to hold Shift and scoot this over to make a duplicate. And see how it added 01 to the end, 001? I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to go to the front, and I'm going to hold down Shift, UCX underscore. By putting UCX on that same name as the object before, I'm telling it to be a collision. That's how Unreal knows to not let you walk through it. Now I'm going to just scoot this back over on top of itself. I'm going to go to my layers panel and I'm going to hide the UCX piece. I'm going to press M on the keyboard to bring up my materials. I'm going to add in a standard material. If I double click on it, it'll open up its properties here. Diffuse. I'm just going to add a bitmap. Doesn't matter what it is. But I'm going to add my inside. Where'd you go? Sci fi level. Maps. Builders. I'm just going to add this just to get us started. I'm going to come back and change that later. And I'm going to change this material. I'm going to call it wall 800x underscore MAT for materials. Close that. Now I'm going to go file, save as. I'm going to save in my 3ds Max file. Where did you go? I'm going to call this sci-fi underscore builder. Hit save. Now I'm going to minimize this. Go inside Photoshop. 
Now, I'm going to be building each one of these objects. I'm not going to build them in front of you, but you're going to be building each one. I'm going to show you how to do this angle piece and some basic texture work. First of all, I'm going to throw in this texture and get, the, get started on texturing. I'm going to go to Select, Color Range, select the black, hit OK, and now I'm going to go Select image, oh, select inverse, and I'm going to hold down control and press J. That duplicates the green area. I selected the black, then I told it select everything but the black, and that gives me nothing but the green. I'm going to add a layer between them that's just black. I'm going to delete this by dragging it down, and now I've got the green layer by itself. Now inside of this, I'm going to go to my picture, and it looks like I have two panels in the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my rounded rectangle, set it to about 5. I've got to look at my pictures. I need to drag in my color. So I'm going to drag this file in, just so I know what colors things need to be. And I am working right now on wall 800. So I'm going to scoop this out of the way, and I know the walls are this dark gray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample them, And I'm going to, on the layer with my lines, I'm going to right click the eye, change it to red. And I'm going to name it lines, just to keep track of it easy. And I'm going to select on the outside of it, making sure contiguous is select. If I take contiguous, it'll select the black everywhere. Now what I'm going to do is it selected some in here, and so that means I'm just going to hold down shift on the rectangular selection. Make sure that I get it. Oh, looks like I have to hold down alt, subtract it out. And what I'm going to do is select inverse. That's just going to give me this box. But I want it to be a little further out from the box. So I'm going to go to select, modify, expand, three pixels, and hit OK. Now make sure I'm not on the lines layer. I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to fill it with the wall color, like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this rectangular tool. And I'm going to make sure it's on the same color as that. And the picture that we were looking at had two sides see had two panels with rounded corners or chamfered corners so I'm going to go to this tool set it to 5 make sure that its color is set to that color I'm going to drag it out and now I'm not going to see anything but if I double click I'm going to go to bevel and I'm going to take this white off I'm going to make it black and I'm going to set this to normal and what this is going to do is it's going to give it dark on both sides. I'm going to hit OK real quick. And I'm going to rasterize this layer so that it's not uh, no longer a vector tool. I'm going to double click and go back in so now I can see it a little better. Bevel, I'm going to turn down the dark on both sides. I just want it to look like it's bumping out a little bit. Hit OK. I'm going to hit Control J to duplicate that layer. And I'm going to hold down Control and Shift, and I'm just going to scoot this layer over. You've got to make sure you're on a different tool. Any tool will work that's not the object drawing tool. Now these two shapes are not the same size. They don't quite fit. But I'm going to select both of them and hit Control T. And I'm just going to stretch them a little bit like this. Now I'm going to select the top one. Scoot it in. Make sure it's just like the picture that it's got a little bit of edge. Control T. Scoot it in. Control T it in a little too much space because I want to follow the concept sheet as closely as possible and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change because this is the color I want the background to be a little bit different so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this material and hit control U and just so I'm not guessing I'm going to make sure that I grab a color I'm going to use the ceiling color because it's not as light as the floor I'm just going to if I hold down control and I click on the thumbnail, it'll select everything that's on that thumbnail. I'm going to go up a layer, I'm going to fill it in with a lighter color. To make sure I'm using the same things over and over again. I don't want it quite that light, so I'm going to turn that down to about 25%, just so they look different. And on the other side, it looks like I've got 1, 2, 1, 2, and then 2. So if I make the top, then I don't have to make the other side. So I'm just going to make a new layer. Go to my rectangular selection tool. And this is hard to figure out. I want it to be exactly like this, but how do I get that? Well, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my line tool, my pencil tool, select black, make sure it's at two to one polygon or pixel. I'm going to click in the corner and hold down shift and click again. Click, hold down shift. This is going to give me the center. I'm going to make another layer because I'm trying to grid this thing out so that it looks perfect. Holding down shift while I'm drawing. See, I click in the middle, click and hold, hold down shift, and then I can drag out and it'll stick at these 45 degree angles. Now I need to figure out what's this angle. So I'm going to go in here and click, hold down control. I'm letting go of the mouse, clicking again. Letting go of the mouse while I'm still holding down shift, click again. This is for knowing exactly how to bisect objects. Go up here, click, hold down shift. This is just going to give me, so I know exactly where these things are supposed to be cut up. Just take some guesswork out of it and makes things, especially in sci-fi, when you believe that computers are more powerful, you want to be able to feel like they all make sense. And things don't make sense if you guess, especially in the, when computers are doing things in the future, they're going to be more accurate, not less accurate. And this had two pieces at the top and one in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the one here. And if you want things to really, really work, select this color. What I need to do is figure out my spacing between everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down, and I'm going to click here, hold down Shift, and I'm just going to draw a little box. I'm going to fill that box with neon green. This is my spacer tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this at the edge here of my lines. And if you need to be more accurate, you can just zoom in. Put mine here. I'm going to put it at the top and at the side. And since we've got, wait, control J to duplicate. Where'd you go? Control J, control shift, plus arrow keys to move things. You'll understand why I'm putting these things where I am in a second. All right, now that I've got my spacers, I'm going to go to the top layer, hold shift, and select the bottom layer. That's all the little pieces. And I'm going to hold down control and hit G to group them so I can turn them all off if I want to. Modification. I'm going to go up. I'm going to start at this little corner and go over. I need one at the bottom, it looks like. One more little spacer. Move to a different tool. It looks like it's picked up my wrong, uh, wrong color, so I'm just going to select here, select this color, go to this corner. Control J to duplicate, Control Shift to move it quickly, just Control to move it slower. Put it right at the corner. And I actually think that's too much space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a couple of the green lines, green dots. And I'm just going to put it right in the center. I need, I should measure that for a little qu more quality. And I should zoom in some more. But I'm trying to do these as quick as possible. That's better spacing. Now I'm going to do that again. I need to move the green point again. J. Spacing is a principle of design that makes your pieces look more consistent continuously. And I'm going to turn down my lines so I can get a better look at it. And these, the spacing is way too much compared to their picture. They're far better put together. And so what I'm going to do is turn my lines back on. I'm going to grab my pieces. And that's my problem. I need my spacing to be this distance between everything and that 
zoom in a little bit closer. huge fan of that. I would like that spacing a little tighter in between everything. All right. I'm going to hold down, click on the top, hold shift, control G. I'm going to drag this down or control J to duplicate it. I'm going to hold down control and press T. I'm going to grab the center point, scoot it down, right click, vertical, I'm going to click on the check bar, hit enter, and hold down control and shift and scoot this down until it's aligned with its section. And I'm seeing that the middle piece is too far apart. Grab my little green dot again, scoot it down, align it on the center. I'm going to say that this will be fine. I'm going to turn off my line layer and I'm going to turn off everything behind it. I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'm just going to give that a quick save. I just control S. Go into 3ds Max. Press M on my keyboard to bring up my materials or select this. Double click here. Add this object. Double click back on here and I'm going to tell it I want to see this in viewport. And now I've got to drag it onto the object by clicking here. Click off, press F4 to hide the lines. And now I've got a basic layout. Looks like I kind of got sideways on my wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into Photoshop, grab these two groups, and I'm going to press Control E to merge them. Control T, right click, flip 90 degrees. I'm going to do the same thing to this layer. Control G, Control E to merge them, Control T, right click, Control S to save, 3ds Max is loading that up as we speak, now it's changed them, and now what this allows me to do is if I make these pieces correctly, I can hold down Shift, scoot it over, just hit OK, we're going to delete this piece anyways, they will align perfectly, and inside Unreal you can build these builder block these Lego style buildings. I rotate this, I'm gonna click here, and that'll let me rotate at 45 degree angles. I'm gonna go to 180. It's gonna be off, that's why I can zoom in. And now I can build lots of walls really quickly by just duplicating. I'm gonna delete, these, delete that one. I've got this object, I'm gonna open up its group, add its UCX, I'm gonna select both of them, they're both actually there. And I'm going to go to File, Export, Export Selected. I'm going to go to My File, and I'm going to go to Sci-Fi Level. I'm going to go to Assets, and I'm going to name this Wall underscore 800x2. That means 800 by one side, 800 by another side, underscore 20 by 20 thick, underscore sci-fi, the level it came from. And I'm going to save this as FBX. Hit save. It's going to ask me some questions. Smoothing group I want to bring. I don't need it to triangulate it. I've already done that. And I want to make sure that it's FBX 2016 and 17. It'll be under advanced options because it doesn't want to use any others. Hit OK. Now I've transferred that object into Unreal. Now inside Unreal we're going to have to make some more types of maps because this map, these aren't quite enough. Like I need things like specular maps and other things like that. And how I'm going to do that just real quick is there's several different ways that you can build these type of options in. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to hold down control, alt, shift, and tap E. 
that's going to merge this layer, all the layers it sees into one new layer. I'm going to hold down Control, Shift, and U to turn it all gray. Now that it's all gray, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to go to my paintbrush tool, right click, and I'm going to grab just a messed up tool. And I'm going to explain more of this later. Turn it down, and I'm just going to add some weird damage to it. Just inconsistencies in the texture. I'm going to have to turn them way down, and this is way too obvious of a texture. I'm going to turn this layer down. And I'm going to go to black. White things, the closer you are to white in a specular map, the more shiny it will be. The closer you are to black, the less shiny you are. Now this is an incredibly lazy map. I'm going to select these and I'm going to I'm going to merge these two into one layer. I'm going to hit Control D to deselect, Control E to merge these two, and I'm going to hold down Control and select these to grab all of them. Select inverse. Oh, where'd you go? Select inverse. And now I'm going to, on the specular channel, I'm going to delete everything that's in the cracks so that it's only on the top pieces, just so it makes it look more not more natural. You won't even see these until we start adding lights. I'm going to hit File, Save As, and I'm going to change this from Diff. I'm going to change this to Spec, Specular. And I'm going to save this as a PNG. Save. I'm going to hide these two. I'm going to make a normal map. Control J. I'm going to go to Image, Adjustment, Levels. And I'm making a kind of a height map. Just trying to get the lights and darks to be more separate. And then I'm going to go right, control I to invert it. Nope, no, I'm not. I'm going to go to filter, normal, height to normal. And there's several ways to make normal maps. I'm going to hit OK. That gave me a really bad normal map, but it's something that we can work with. I'm going to go inside this and I'm going to go. Control T, right click A, T, and I'm going to flip this vertically. And I want to do that quite red. Now I'll leave it there and we'll change this later. Turn all my layers back on. Save this as a normal map. Norm. Save it as a PNG, hit save, hit OK, hide that layer. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Control and select these. I'm going to go up, and I'm going to fill this in with white. And I'm going to go to black, and I'm going to go to hold Control and press D to deselect, fill it in with black. This is going to be my layer mask. File, save as, and I'm going to call this mask. Wait, before I save this, let's place it in the alpha channel map. I'm going to merge these by clicking and holding Control and pressing E. I'm going to hit Control A to select everything, Control C to copy it. I'm going to go into my channels, and I'm going to add a new channel, alpha 1, and I'm going to hold down Control and press V. That's going to paste this in. This is my alpha channel. Go back to layers, and I'm going to, I've got my basic diffuse, I'm going to hide this and this and this. All right, RGB channel, got it all saved up. Turn that off. No, we need them both. All right, and I'm gonna hit File, Save As. And I'm gonna save this as a PSD. One of the few times that I use PSDs because Unreal for some reason likes them. Hit save. Hit OK. I'm, what I did was I saved this black and white layer, and the white is going to be one object that I select, and the black's going to be another. And inside Unreal, I'm going to tell that the stuff that's white, I want it to be a certain type of metal. The stuff that's black, I want it to be a different type of metal. And by saving it in the alpha channel, it means I can use one texture to do all of that. I'm going to merge everything down and save that just one more quick time because I want to get rid of anything I don't need to see. 
because if I'm not looking at it, so I've got all this, I'm just going to control E, and I've still got my alpha channel, the file save as, because I want to keep my builder, but I'm going to name this as my PSD, save, I'm going to go back to where I had all my files, and I'm going to save this as my builder, so whenever I want to come back and make changes, go to TIFF, save, okay, I'm going to go back into 3ds Max, and I'm going to double click on this, open up my views, TIFF, this is my PSD, now I'm going to double click back on this layer, and I'm going to go down, not extended parameters, maps, and I'm going to go to specular level, click on this little box, bitmap, and I'm going to add my specular, I'm going to go to my normal or bump, click it, add a normal bump modifier, double click on it, add my normal map, it should have updated my texture by now, select all this, file, export, export selected, save, now that object will have everything you need inside of Unreal. But now we're going to do something different. We're going to do the 45 degree angle objects. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to duplicate this object and I'm going to call it wall angle underscore get rid of the first three zeros, hit OK. I'm going to hide this wall, scoot this one back and I'm going to hold down Alt and W and go to the side And what I do need is I need to know exactly how far this needs to go over. And in my object sheet, let's just say that I'm building the ceiling right now. I'm going to go, it's 800 by 800. So I know this wall is 800. So I'm going to scoot this wall over. First of all, I'm going to lay it over by pressing E to rotate. Hold down Shift, 90 degrees, hit OK. That'll tell me a distance. Hold down Shift and duplicate another one. Make sure these walls are aligned. Then I'm going to duplicate this up, but I have to hit Alt W to do it to go to the other layout. Hold down Shift, scoot it up here. These objects are just helping me with alignment. I'm going to delete this because I don't need it anymore. And now I'm going to lay this wall down. It's actually really easy to do. I'm going to select my points. Scoot them over here. Align them there. Align them here. Now some of the walls will only be at a lower angle. And you have to check that and see what that's going to be. Probably be somewhere in here. But you need to measure it with the walls themselves. But now that I've got this wall, Alt W here, at this 45 degree angle, now I've got a ceiling that can be walked up. But I need to build this in. I need to hold down, hold down Shift, duplicate it over. I'm going to get rid of the first, the three letters. Underscore U C X underscore. Hit OK. Scoot that back over. Delete that. Now I've got these two objects. File, export, export selected, and I'm going to call them Wall. angled underscore make sure I save it as FBX oh where'd you go where'd you go FBX at top save smoothing groups already been triangulated and hit OK and now you've done two of the objects most of the objects in here you're just going to be doing front and back front and back front and back and then you're going to be making three of them have angles it's not a tremendous amount of work but the texturing doesn't take that long either. But once you get to working at it and you get better at it, you'll be able to make better and more interesting textures. I just want to show you the kind of things that you can do. Because as your texturing skill goes up, 
you'll be able to make assets that actually have more character. It just takes practice. Because you start with something like this, and then you add grunge to it to make it look more real. We're going to be doing a lot more things like that. Let's see. One, two. And you're slowly going to be building objects that look more and more sci-fi. But we're having to start with this basic building block kit so that you can understand this is how you lay out levels very quickly. You need your basic kit. You start, get them laid out, make them perfectly so that they're good background pieces. And then you keep adding things until you don't need any more. Right, you're going to follow the concept sheets and handouts and everything. All of these objects will be due next class. Hope that helps. I'll show you how to take these things into Unreal next video.